Okay, so let's see if we can just put a center hit on. That should be pretty close to zero. Cool. Okay, so let's see if we can get a center hit on the gong. Yep. Four o'clock, three inches in from the edge. Okay, well that's pretty good. Okay. Well, let's see if we can go a couple of magazines worth and do the gong, eh? Do the um, bowl length plate. Yep. Yeah. Good idea. Yep, ready. Hit. <laughs> Moved him around. You see where it hit? It looked pretty central, I think. I think that's me. I need some more rounds. Okay. Yep. We'll put in the rest of that box. Right. Okay. 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 Well, if nothing's changed. Turn him round. Just to the right. Uh, just okay. right well, it must have hit the um, pole. Yeah, still... it sounded like it, didn't it? But I saw dust as well that may be ricochet. Hit. Down she goes, and it's done. <laughs> okay, well. Awesome. <laughs> that was seven to do six. Yeah. And just right, obviously, I would say. Yeah. Yep. It didn't feel like it pulled right or anything like that. Maybe it was a little bit of wind. Okay, today we're doing some testing with a job that came in, um, which is this Ruger M77 and 243. That's a hunting rifle set up with a hunting rifle, Leopold scope, um, in a normal setup that the guys had for eight years, ten years, something like that. Shot really well. I mean, the format you're basically looking at. What he got done a little while ago was it was just running a Harris mount, running, running off the front stud, Harris bipod running off the front stud. He got a little rail put on here, so he had some choices of bipods. On here, and what he wanted to shoot it with is this little knockoff, this Atlas knockoff. So I'm not a big fan of knockoffs, not trying to support them at all, but this is still a decent sort of, sort of hunting level, you know, basic um, bipod. And for what he did, very cheap way and cost effective way to get what he wanted. When he fitted that up, went out and fired it, it jumped and released the legs and, and fall da fell down on one side. Um, I looked at it, okay, the system isn't quite as nice as an Atlas in the way it's done, but that wasn't the problem. These shouldn't move. What it did have on was this muzzle brake. Now this muzzle brake, but in a slightly different form. Um, this muzzle brake looks a lot like a lot of them where it, where it did have a flat floor to the bottom of it so it was all flat on the floor of it by the way I'm working around the muzzle for those people who are worried about that it's empty it's clear so we'll go back to our muzzle um, what I the, it did have a flat floor on it designed to in theory stop them from muzzle running a little bit really about stopping dust going on the ground and blast going on the ground idea um, but what I had found previously with similar muzzle brakes is it actually pushes too hard down in the front of the muzzle. 
What I suspected was the opposite of what most people would think, is that the jump that was this was happening, that was going through, that caused this thing to move, was that the muzzle brake was being pushed down by this blast and then bouncing back up, so getting a bounce like that. That's what I suspected. So what I did, and I've got a video here, I actually shot it in the same form as he'd shot it, shot it off the front of my Triton, I don't do a lot of that, but I shot it off the front of my, of my ute, um, truck, whatever you want to call it, and videoed that. And sure enough, I got exactly what I thought I'd get. Um, you see here this clip, you see the muzzle actually pushing down, coming back up, and then sitting is how it actually fired. Well, once I had that, I then went back and I modified this muzzle brake. If you look at it, see on the top there, it's got this cut out the way they do it. It's the way the mill end goes in. And what it normally has, like I said, is a flat floor in behind here or underneath here that then stops the blast. The, the floor comes right out to the sides. What I've done is modify it like that. So I've cut it out to almost the same depth, not quite the same depth, a little tiny bit thicker on the bottom than it is on the top. That's in theory to give it a little tiny bit of downward inclination, but very, very little of it. It would make it blow a lot more dust around if we were shooting this, if it was being fired in the prone position in the dirt. So it wouldn't be suitable for that. But for a hunting rifle that's shot off a tree, off a log, off a bonnet, out of the car, that sort of stuff is the way it's shot, then it's not going to be an issue whatsoever. Then I took it back and fired it, and you, this is what I saw. Straight back action, exactly like I wanted to, behaved exactly like I wanted it to. So that shot really well, I was really happy with that. Today we're out doing the test, we've got our target set up over there, 400 yards. This is where we were shooting the other day. Um, onto that gong, zeroed it in on the gong, which is 400 yards away. I'll re-zero it to the where he wants to zero it. I'll have to contact him and see if he wants 200 yards or 100 yards. But I'll re-zero it for that. But I pushed it up to where it was zeroed on our gong up there. Um, and then we had set up that little um, falling tree system, just a bit of fun. Um, I, there was one shot that I pulled to the right. Don't know if that was me or if that was the Augusta wind through there, but still really close. You know, it, it held down, I would say, at 400 yards. We'll have to look at those hits. But probably for, for six out of seven shots, it was holding down a, um, a three or four inch group at 400 yards. So. It is the ammo it's shooting, which is what he hunts with, is 55 grain factory ammo. He was using the um, federal stuff. I um, also use some um, of the Winchester stuff, but stuff that's leaving the muzzle at 3,800, somewhere between 3,800 and 4,000 feet per second. So scorching ammo, um, and still really good group, 400 yards. He really hunts with the thing. He tells me it's really nighttime hunting he does on foxes and roos and goats and things like that, and really. The, uh, the feral cats, that sort of stuff, but really it's sort of 150 yards to 300 yards, what you can really do at night time with a spotlight, and he said he loves it. It's a great rifle, but he tried to improve it. It started to jump. He lost, it lost a bit of confidence in it. Um, I felt I knew what was going on, and sure enough, it was the muzzle. And I really put this video together so that people can um, see that, yeah, it, it, it's not that complicated to fix, um, obviously we could have run, shredded it and run away that one of our muzzle brakes on it would have got a, the same sort of result, but I really wanted to just show it rather than any magic involved, what the, what the actual issue is. This is still a very effective muzzle brake, rifle shoots really nice, um, and for him it was a bit of grinding, a bit of die grinder work involved and we've got it done at very little expense. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, down below here we've got a link to our web store where we have some of the specialised long range shooting products that we actually produce. Check them out. And for those of you who can, it'd be great to get some help. In our store we have support bits and when you purchase those the money goes direct to our channel and helps us bring these videos to you. Thanks guys. See you next time.